Our aim is to uphold a historic shared achievement that benefits everybody. And I honestly shudder to think what might follow if through neglect or complacency or timidity, we turned away and allowed what we have worked for to be torn down. Consider for a moment the alternative world that Vladimir Putin yearns for. The reason why his onslaught against Ukraine offends every fiber of my being is not simply that it's morally abhorrent, although of course it is. And it has nothing to do with the accident of geography that Putin is waging his war in Europe. No, what really chills the blood is that he is prepared to destroy the laws that protect every nation and by extension, every person across the globe. Putin's goal is to turn back the clock to an era when might was right and big countries treat their neighbors as prey. He is waging a 19th century war of imperial conquest, deliberately debasing international conduct, utterly contemptuous of today's values. And by attacking one of the world's biggest producers of food and fertilizer, he is driving up global prices and inflicting still greater hardship on some of the poorest people around the world. Hence, it was Prime Minister Modi who told Putin to his face, and I quote, I know that today's era is not the era of war. The only route to peace in Europe is for Putin to end his war and withdraw his troops. As we stand against the Russian invasion, the United Kingdom benefits beyond measure from our rock solid friendships with the United States of America, with France, with Germany, with Canada, Australia, and many, many others. Last Friday, we announced how we will develop the next generation of combat aircraft hand in glove with Italy and Japan. And these vital relationships, constructed over generations, embedded in institutions like NATO and the G7, amount to our greatest source of strength and the foundation stone of British democracy and diplomacy. And today, we have no higher priority than to support our Ukrainian friends until they prevail, as they inevitably will. But that will not be enough to sustain the international order unless its principles and institutions command the support of the world beyond Europe and North America. And in the coming decades, an ever greater share of the world economy, and therefore the world's power, will be in the hands of countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Together, they will decide whether the international order will endure. That reality has been evident for some time, but I am not convinced that British diplomacy has fully caught up. My goal is to build on the work of my predecessors and ensure that we do catch up. And under me, that task has begun. Our diplomats are not pundits in the commentary box offering their thoughts and analysis. They are players on the field. The goal of foreign policy is not to comment, but to make a difference. Britain has agency. Britain has influence. Britain has leverage. And it is my job to use it. So, I will make a long-term and sustained effort to revive old friendships and to build new ones reaching far beyond our long-established alliances. The UK has a range of capabilities to support emerging economies with young populations to achieve their goals. And whatever our differences, there are core principles behind which I believe every nation can unite. We all say in the UN Charter that we believe in sovereignty and territorial integrity which means the right of all countries to decide their own futures and set their own paths without being invaded or dismembered. 